Hey friends! Um, this is a reading lesson all about retelling and summarizing. Now those two skills are very similar, but they do have some differences, okay? Um, retelling is when you start at the very beginning, the very top of the story, the beginning, and you tell every single detail of that story that you can remember. Um, you talk about the characters, you talk about um, the order that things happened. You have to go in the right order. Um, you talk about the setting. You talk about the problem and the solution. Retelling is um, you basically take the story you just read and you can run over and tell somebody about it. And if you retell it, then it's almost like they read the book because you're giving every single detail about what happened. Um, now, summarizing is a little bit different. You tell what happened in the book, but you kind of give an overall summary, um, just an overall idea of what happened in the book. Um, a lot of times you can read the summary um, of a book, maybe on the back of a chapter book. If you read it, it kind of gives a summary, but it kind of leaves some things to the imagination so that if I read a book and I run and tell somebody a summary, they might be like, oh, that sounds like a really good book. I should probably go read it because you're not telling them every little thing that happened, just kind of giving them a general idea um, of what happened. You're summarizing. So retell is you're telling it over again. You retell every single detail that you can remember. And then summarize is you just kind of give a summary um, generally about what it was about. Um, so we're going to practice with this story. It's called A Sunny Spot for Cedric, and it's a Biltmore adventure. Cedric was a big puppy who lived in a big house. It was the biggest house in America, and it was called Biltmore. One day, Cedric rushed out the doors of the big house. He was full of energy and ready to play. The first thing he did was run around barking at the lion statues that stood guard on the steps. <laughs> then Cedric dashed down and around all the ponds in the Italian garden through the shrub garden, down the woodland trail, and over the bridge on the bass pond path. Cedric ran all the way to the lodge gate. Boing, boing. Then suddenly all his energy just ran out. <sighs> Cedric turned around and started the long walk back to the big house so he could take a nap. When Cedric reached the stables, he remembered the piles of soft hay inside. That is a good place for a nap, he thought. Just as he was getting comfortable, Mrs. Vanderbilt's horse, Jet, trotted in. Hey, you can't sleep in my dinner, Jet told him. Nee, nee. Cedric went into the big house and peeked into the kitchen. Maybe he could curl up in front of the nice warm stove. But on the way there, he accidentally startled the cook. Cedric, she hollered, go find somewhere else to be. Crash clatter. Next, he tried the bowling alley, but the floor was too slippery to get comfortable. Oops. The Halloween room was kind of spooky. Cedric decided he should try up on the first floor. Cedric didn't even try to sleep in the Grand Banquet Hall because it was so big that every noise echoed. And the billiard room certainly wasn't any quieter. Boink. Cedric was so sleepy now that he was sure he could sleep anywhere, even on the cold marble floor of the winter garden. But not while the butler was watering the plants. Splash. It is a big house with a lot of rooms, Cedric thought. Maybe I can find a cozy place on the second floor. Looking into the fanciest guest bedroom, Cedric thought he found a nice bed, but it rocked too much when he tried to climb in. Cedric went into the owner's bedroom, but George Vanderbilt's bed was too high to jump on, and even the Vanderbilt's bed was too low to crawl under. So Cedric made his way to the fourth floor and climbed up the spiral stairs in the conservatory. But it was way too windy to take a nap on the roof today. So Cedric went to the library and looked over the balcony. There was a nice cozy spot down on the rug by the fire. 
but wouldn't you know it, the minute he lay down, the maid came in with a carpet sweeper. Poor Cedric. Cedric had almost given up when he spotted an open door to the big covered porch that his owner called the Logia. And there, Cedric found the perfect sunny spot to curl up and sleep. And from then on, that sunny spot became Cedric's favorite spot in the whole big house. Okay, so first I'm going to practice and I'm going to summarize this book. So this is a book called A Sunny Spot for Cedric. Cedric is a dog who lives in this big house and one day he plays so hard and he wants a nap. So he goes back to his house and he tries lots of places to take a nap, but none of them are really working out that well for him. And he's just about to give up. But then he finds a really awesome spot on the porch so he can take a nap. And then that ends up being his favorite nap spot and he takes a nap there every day. So you see, I kind of just told you what the book was about. I summarized, I didn't tell you every single detail. Um, I just kind of gave you a general idea about the book. So I summarized what happened. Now I'm going to retell. Now the thing about retelling is, especially if it's a longer book, um, sometimes you might have a hard time remembering everything in the exact order. Well, if you still have the book with you, you can always go back and look and remind yourself of that order. So I'm going to have my book open down here, but I'm going to try and do it from memory first. So this book is about a dog named Cedric, and he lives at the Biltmore House. Um, and one day he's playing. He goes all the way to the bass pond. He goes through the garden. He goes all the way to the lodge gate, which is so far away from the house. And then suddenly he gets really tired. And so he decides he wants to go back to the house to take a nap. So he walks all the way back to the Biltmore House. And um, he tries finding all these places to take a nap. So first he's like, oh, the hay sounds really nice. So he tries and he goes and lays down in the hay, but then the horse comes and he's like, hey, you can't take a nap um, in my dinner. And then he tries to go to the kitchen and the cook's like, Cedric, get out of here. You can't sleep here. And then he tries the bowling alley, but it's too slippery. He tries the Halloween room, but it's too scary. Um, he didn't try the banquet hall because it echoed. And he didn't try the billiard room because there were um, pool balls going everywhere. He was going to take a nap in the garden, but the butler was in there watering. And so he's like, okay, I'll go up to the next floor. So he goes to where the bedrooms are and he gets on a crib, but it swings too much. And then he tries to get up on his owner's bed, but it's too high. He tries to climb under another owner's bed and it's too low. Um, he goes to the observatory and it's too windy. So he tries to take a nap on the roof and you can't even do that. And he goes to the library um, and he notices there's a cozy spot on the floor by the fire. And then the maid comes in and starts sweeping up the carpet, being all loud. Um, and so finally, he's just about to give up and he goes out on this big porch where there's a nice sunny warm spot. And then that's his spot um, every day that he needs to take a nap. So that is the story of the sunny spot for Cedric. And that's probably why the story is called the sunny spot because that's where he ends up finding his perfect spot. So yeah, I had to use the, um, the book a little bit. I had to jog my memory. Um, but you know, if you notice, sometimes I looked and I could tell a couple of things that happened after. So don't really rely on the book too much. I want you to try and retell from your memory first. So that's why it's so important when you're reading that you stop and you're at, you ask yourself, do I know what I just read? Or did what I just read make sense? And if it doesn't, if you read a couple of pages and you're like, I can't even remember what I read, chances are you're not paying attention to what you're reading. Or maybe that book's a little too hard for you and you're spending your whole time trying to figure out words. Maybe pick a little bit of an easier book. Um, so that's the difference between retelling and summarizing. Remember, retell is every single detail about the book from the beginning, the middle, and the end. And then summarizing is just kind of a general idea, um, a summary of the book.